I decided to do this training today um, at 4 a.m. today because I think it's critical, very, very critical for, for many of you to know this because I have noticed that many of you are not tapping into the mentorship relationship uh, um, the right way. And it could be from the place of ignorance, it could be from the place of not knowing what to do or maybe how to do it. And it's important that I share these with us so that we are able to maximize uh, um, totally very well what to do as far as mentorship relationship is, is concerned. And this will help you to do tremendously even apart from working with me, it will help you to do tremendously with other people that you even look up to and look as role models or people that you think that have something that you can benefit from and who can push you forward to, to become better and to become productive. But this, of course, is, is developed in terms of uh, um, my relationship with my mentor my experiences and the people I've been able to mentor for the last couple of years. And based on the fact that this is what I think people should do if they desire to see the results that they are looking at. So let's look at this quickly. And of course, what is mentorship? Mentorship as defined by Yali. Mentorship is an agreement is an agreement between two people sharing experiences and expertise. Yes, an agreement between two people sharing two key things, experiences and expertise. And that's why a mentor typically is somebody who, has, who, who is succeeding or has already succeeded in what you desire to succeed in and you don't have a clear blueprint or a clear roadmap on how to do that. The sharing of these experiences and expertise will, uh, um, will help you the mentee in your reflection, in your decision-making, and in the actions you want to take. Yes, you are just you are kind of reflecting about your life and confused. You can be thinking of making a decision and you don't know how to make that decision. You can be thinking of taking actions and you don't know how to take that action. So the sharing of experiences and expertise can help you to reflect, make that decision and take that action. And all of this is to improve two key things in your life, your personal life or personal growth and your professional development. Professional development here includes your career, for those who are working professionals, and of course, entrepreneurs who are building uh, 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 businesses. So this is what mentorship is all about. And that's why I try to, I share with you the write-up, I share with you a lot of things based on my personal life and business and all of that to push you uh, forward. So there are some basic fundamentals that I think that every mentee should pay attention to when it comes to mentorship relationship. There are three elements to a successful relationship between mentors and mentees. This is very important. Three elements. Number one is respect. You need to respect the mentor and the mentor must respect the mentee. There is two way. So because you are my mentee, it doesn't mean that I should disrespect you uh, um, in how I greet you, or how I salute you, how I call your name, or and all of that. You see, I need to respect you. Even even when I'm rebuking you, I need to respect you. In, in that rebuke, I may sound stern, I may sound um, disciplined, I may sound serious, but in that process, I need to respect you. The second element is trust. And you need to trust me that I have the experience and the expertise to mentor you. You need to trust me that your personal issues that you share with me remain with me confidentially. Nobody else will hear it. 
you learn to trust me that um, I can guide you. I have that ability to lead you to your journey. I have the knowledge to assist you to where you desire to be. And most importantly, listening. Listening. This is very, very important in a mentorship relationship. If you cannot listen to the experiences and advice I'm sharing, there's no need to be my mentee. If I cannot listen to you when you are explaining something and you need my help, it is not necessary for me to be a mentor. So I need to pay attention to you. I need to listen to you. I need to understand you. I need to ask questions to better understand the situation so that I know what to do and how to do as far as supporting you is concerned. Are we there? Yes. Yes, Doc. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Let's proceed. So, in mentorship, one thing is very important, consistent and productive communication always remains the responsibility of the mentee. But it doesn't mean that the mentor cannot check up on you, but it is your responsibility to consistently make sure that you're communicating with the mentor. What does that mean? If a mentor gives you tasks, it's your responsibility to do that task and report back to your mentor. It's your responsibility you have a goal, it's your responsibility to reach out to your mentor and inform your mentor, oh, I want to do this, what do you think? I want to do this, what do you think? For example, my mentor is a very busy man, very, very busy man. Sometimes I can send him a message today and he will reply by like five days after, which is understandable. He's busy, he has his life, he has his business, he has his family, he has his career, and he's traveling, and all of that. So, uh, um, so I cannot just sit and claim because it's my mentor and I just sit quiet. No, I need to, when I have someone, I want to embark on something new. I update him, this is what I want to do and all of that. And I wait for his feedback. And, and we talk about it and I proceed. When I'm going through a challenge, I inform him, he gives me feedback and advice and, and step forward. For, for your case, you guys is more structured. Things I do with you, I don't do with my mentor, per se. It's just maybe many of the things I do with you guys is like this how I love to be mentored, that I've, I've developed the framework and I'm doing with all of you guys. For example, um, some of you are already in phase two, where part of the what, what you do is that um, every Sunday, every Sunday you send, you send your goals for the week three, and every Saturday, you give me updates about the goals and how far you have achieved the goals. You see, things like that my mentor doesn't do with me. So it just means sometimes that they start and communicate in, right? And there are many other things that I've structured for you guys that is not done. And I do most of the things so that it should keep you guys engaged to consistently communicate back to me. It's very important because a good mentor should be able to track the progress of the mentees in terms of results. It's your responsibility to consistently communicate. And if you send me a message and I don't reply on time, it doesn't mean I'm not seen, or it doesn't mean I'm, sometimes I can see, for example, and I'm waiting to, for something to happen so that I can connect to it and we talk about it as possible. Okay, so. It is important to know when it is proper to email your mentor, to call your mentor, or to have a face-to-face -face conversation. Very important. So as one, that's one thing that as you have a mentor or you have a role model or somebody elder than elder in age, whatever they are looking up to, it's very important for you to know the person's temperature, know the person's temperament, know how the person looks at things, know um, when it's proper for you to send an email or to send a WhatsApp message to do a call or have a face-to-face -face conversation. It's good to always talk about this and then you react to it. It's very important. Good. Then the quality of time and advice you receive 
will be exactly what you have earned with your diligence. Yes, it's very important. The kind of quality, some of you here, whether I like it or not, there are some of you there that I pay more attention to than some of you. You have to earn it. As simple as that, you have to earn it. And the way that you earn it, of course, is in how you listen and take advice seriously and how you produce results. Part of the content that, that, that you get and you study is part of my earning process for you. When you complete the 35 days successfully, that sends a different message about you automatically. Very and very, just very few of you have been able to complete a 35 days activity in exactly 35 days. Very few of you. You see? So, those of you, there are some of you that loiter around with it and, 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 and loiter, 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 and take more than 35 days to do 40, 45 days even. It's, it's, it happens, and that's, that's the level I see you in. I see you to be inconsistent, to, to not be committed, and many other things, to give a lot of excuses and so on. I see you at that level. So you have to earn it. The way you submit, uh, um, uh, um, how do I say? The way you submit your weekend activities also affects the kind of respect you earn from me. The way that you communicate, the way that you are proactive, you see? So the quality of time that you get, there are some of you that when you reached out to with something, Sometimes I tell you, I'll come see you in your town. So I fit you in my schedule if I'm to travel and I see you. There are some of you that we have not met yet. I've never done that to you. You see, it's different, right? So you have to earn it. You have to earn it. Commitment, results. So I need to see you grow and, and all of that, you see. Another thing that some of you do, which I'm not saying is what I need, but some of you go to the extra mile so okay, you know what? Uh, I'm sending you airtime for internet, 10,000. I want to send you transport. I just want to give you money for whatever. It's, you see, sometimes it's just that extra stuff. I don't need your money. I'm, I'm doing very well. I'm taking very good care of myself, right? But there are some things that earn that, earn that, that stuff. But the biggest of all is respecting the activities, the assignments that your mentor gives you, and most of all, producing results. I, I see progress because mentorship is progress. I should see you progressing in your career. I see you progressing in results, and that comes from you updating, oh, this is happening because of this that I learned from you. This is where I am. This is what I've done. This is where I am. It's very powerful. You earn that respect, you see, good. And you earn that time and, and, and commitment towards yourself. So the benefit of being mentored can be number one, you will get help to identify and achieve your goals. Yes, many of you are still very young. You have not yet seen the full complete vision of your career or business you're trying to build. So in the whole of this process, you will get help to identify and achieve your career goals. Number two, you will get help to identify and correct gaps in your generic skills and knowledge. Yes, many of you come to me with just general knowledge of what you study in the university and all of that. You have not yet developed specific skills. You are not known as an expert in a particular thing. And that's why many of you are observing you all carefully. And I'm trying to identify, oh, this person can be good at this. Uh, um, Miss Wise can be good at this. George can be good at this. Brenda can be good at this. Um, Elvis, Jones, and all of that, Miriam can be good at this. It's my responsibility to look at you as you grow, as you communicate with me. I begin to see, oh, I think this person has competence in this and this, and if they grow in this area, they are going to be very excellent professionals. Number three is developing and maintaining a broader perspective on career options and opportunities. Yes, because of the content I share, the things I share with you, the trainings that we have, the recommendations, um, question and answer sessions that we do, it helps you to broaden your perspective as far as career options <clears throat> and opportunities are concerned. 
Okay, so how can you now maximize um, mentoring relationship? How can you now practically maximize it? This is the core of it all. Okay, if you are following, comment in the chat box of your screen. So that people are not sleeping. You see, people are not sleeping. Following. Oh, following Yes, right, right in the chat box. I did not say you should speak. Yes, do. Right in the chat box, they have to. Okay. Excellent. Good. Let's proceed then to the core things that we need to focus on for today. What can you be doing? This is now what you, you as a person need to be looking at. Number one, as, as a mentee, is your responsibility um, to identify goals and propose um, some objectives. Now, because sometimes some mentees sometimes just sit like for example, there are hundreds of young people that um, call me mentor, 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 and all of that. And so that when they call me, I tell you, Brandon, I'm not your mentor. Like stop camouflaging and doing hyping and all of that. I'm not your mentor. Because number one, a mentor is somebody you connect with, you talk to as a mentor. If anybody you have in your mind, like many pastors and and people and young people, they have people like the Les Browns, they have people in America and all of these, they call my mentor, my mentor, they're just role models. Mentorship has a relationship. Anything without a relationship is not mentorship. It's just a role model. It's just a thought leader in the industry that you admire and an icon. It's just one way. You only consume their books and their posts on Facebook. You don't ask them questions. They don't teach you one-on-one -on -one life like this. They don't. That is not mentorship. You see, they don't know your goals. They don't know where you're dying, where you're crying, where you're hungry, or you're homeless. They don't know all of those stuff. They have no idea. That's not mentorship. Mentor, that's why in, in mentorship, it is said that in mentorship, you need to have at least two hours connection with your mentor every once a month. That worst case connection, at least two hours. Stop with your mentor one on one. And many some of the mentors who claim to don't even know this, so they don't even create time for this. Okay, so it's your job as a mentee to identify your goals and bring them to your mentor. Oh, you know, these these are my career goals, these are my business goals for the next couple of days, these are my weekly goals and monthly goals. That is your responsibility. Your mentor just needs to fine tune them and make sure you're in the right direction. For some of you who are already finished the first phase. You're already in this second phase where we talk about your weekly goals even. So those who are still in phase one, work hard and finish but take those 35 days. You don't get to stage two until you finish stage one. You see, as stage one is done, uh, mostly one-on-one, -on -one, that is, you talk about the goals, you don't talk about it in the, in the group, you talk about it to me one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, number two, be willing to learn and propose some learning activities. Yes, be very open to learn, very exciting. Very, very exciting to, to learn and, and, and to get new things, right? And you can learn to learn by asking the things you think their mentor knows and the mentor can teach you. And again, in our case, we already have some of these sessions that we do intentionally and, 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 and I intentionally share content in the PPA community for us to study and learn new things, learn how I think, how I analyze things, how I look at things and how I will look at things. And you can also propose some learning activities, right? Learning activities could be, oh, I think we should, we should do a training on this for us because I think this will help us. It's very important. We can do that, you see. And this learning could be um, through the WhatsApp groups, through the 4 a.m. sessions like this, and through physical. We're going to have um, physical mentee sessions. Okay? We're going to have all of that where you all of you travel, travel to one town, and do all of that so get ready for that we need to learn number three take responsibility 
take responsibility. Actively seek counsel and advice. Yes, it's your responsibility to act. So don't, don't sit and assume that your mentor should know this. No, a mentor is not a mind reader. It's not a magician. It's not God. You need to actively seek for counsel and advice. And all of you have, if I accept that you are my mentee, you have the right to reach out to me and seek for, if I show you my WhatsApp, you see hundreds of messages there from strange numbers, oh, advise me on this. I'm a consultant, I'm a coach, so it means I get paid to talk, I get, I get paid to give advice. So when people some do say that, I just reply, book a session. Uh, and what does it take? I give the condition of booking a session, and some just stay quiet because they have seen the money to pay. But when I accept you as a mentee, it means you have that leeway to reach out at any time and actively seek for counsel. You don't get to pay, first of all. You don't get to go through any protocol. And that's why you need to value it, don't misuse it. So because we have that, of course, there's familiarity counseling. doesn't mean that you need, to, you need to value it and treat it with value. So that, and of course, again, the time I'll create for you, you need to earn it. You need to earn the time I create for you and I invest in you. Very, very important. So actively, and seek for that. In all of you who are in, who are in the mentorship WhatsApp group, if I tell you the number of people that ask for mentorship, like yesterday I was checking my spam, uh, um, um, my spam message, spam messenger, you know, those people that write to who are not your friends, yes. And yesterday I was checking, I'm not checking for about one week or so, and I was checking it, and I saw 33 unread messages. And Thirty one, we are all asking for mentorship. Can you imagine? Thirty one asking for mentorship. Just one person was asking for the thing he she was applying for uh, revenue scholarship and they want me to review um, their stuff. You see, number two, many 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 guys come up from anywhere and they want they want they want to ask for as they call the recommendation letters they are applying for scholarship and all of that they want to recommend them who are even you i don't even know you i don't know the work that you do i don't even know what i can write about you and you're asking for recommendation you see so and that's one thing of you seeking counsel and advice and updating me with your stuff so that when that time comes to write about you i will not struggle to get content or i will happily write about you and endorse you you see, many people like to come for me to endorse them because they believe that, you know, my name is popular and they will see it in places and, and it will give them higher chances. And of course, it has happened many times. Many people have called me from, from, from recruitment panels or interview panels. And like, oh, we're doing these interviews for this, this, and this. And we saw somebody that you recommended, you see. So it's, it, it, there's also some benefits to that because who endorses you also matters a lot. In, 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 in professional group because you never know who knows that person, you see. And of course, when you seek counsel and advice, your mentor, the mentor will get to start noticing your strength and your weaknesses and support you to, um, to grow. Number four, be open to feedback and coaching. Yes, you need to be open to feedback and and, and coaching, you see. So of course, many of you are very open to that. That's one thing I can appreciate for many of you. You're very open to the feedback I give you. You're very open to the coaching that I give you. You're very open to the things I, I share and you read and you ask questions, you give feedback on the things that you read, very important. So you need to be open to that. You should be, you should be coachable, you should love to receive feedback you should love to, to, to receive rebuking, discipline, and at some point, some of you have shouted at you one-on-one -on -one personally. So that's one thing to be open to that if you want to grow part of it. Number five, understanding the parameters of the relationship. What is the state of the relationship? How is the relationship like? At what stage of the relationship? How is it growing? What are the conditions? of me being a good mentee or what are, what are the parameters my mentor is expecting from me. Like you guys know, I, I, I don't play with punctuality. You know that I, when I give things, I like them to be done on time and reported when requested. You know that I value people who produce results. And, I, and I've said it many times, if you are my mentee and 
you enter a new week the same person i get worried about you already i just i like something is wrong with you some i think so i need to see results every week of your life it should be that should be seeing results with you it should, it should be a change that is it that's how people succeed you know that's very important to me you see there are uh, um what else other parameters to be okay i could rebuke you I, I, I can visit you in a business place that's more free of so sales to visit you have not met with girls she still has to come to the office and, and, and what other parameters could be how can you serve your mentor how can you support your mentor whatever some of these parameters you decide on your own as, as a mentee number six be inquisitive and ask questions that's me asking questions be inquisitive if you just sit i mean not you don't need to come and be following you up like a baby. Many of you are not babies. And that's why I intentionally refuse. There are many parents that have reached out to me to mentor their children who are still in high school and actually refuse. I like to mentor those who have at least a degree and above, or 18 and above, they say, who can have a certain level of mentality. You see, because I, 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 I don't have the time now to babysit somebody. I don't. I will not, I'm not, you are not here for me to babysit you. You are here for me to push you to the next level. You are here for me to stretch you. So you need to be inquisitive. And that's why some of the 4 a.m. sessions that we do is focused strictly on question and answers. I give you the point to just ask me questions, speak into my mind, and ask a question about career growth and business. I have clients who put me on a monthly salary, the job just to come and sit and ask me, okay, job is happening in my business, what do I do, what do I do, and that's all, and they pay for it. You have that chance to, to do that. So when you have attended many of my programs, like the master classes, when I do a master class, I always keep an R aside, where the executives who come to the master class, they ask questions from their businesses, and I sit and I just answer. I think I have that gift to, to basically tackle any business problem in any angle basically so that is it so it should be inquisitive and ask questions and that's why i know that i may not have time to answer all whatsapp messages questions i intentionally create and for a 4 a.m every morning at least once a month and you just ask questions but if you come and and i'm saying ask questions and you're just sitting quiet i will not force you i will not shout at you this job Basically, you are losing a lot by not asking questions, except everything is perfect in your life and you're not struggling, which is good, of course. And I'm happy to see that or hear that that is happening. Ask questions. Of course, there are some things that you must not wait for uh, 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 the 4 a.m. session to come for question and answer. You can write me on WhatsApp, we'll do a quick call or send me a question on WhatsApp. I give you a voice note and we progress, but it is your responsibility to be inquisitive. So you can ask questions, sample of questions that you can ask. Is this especially for those who are still at the basics of the mentorship? Um, you can ask a question like, can you tell me more about the time you faced a similar situation? Let's say you're an entrepreneur and you're my mentee and you, you're going to challenge your business and maybe you think that this is something that I must have gone through. You can ask me like, how did I handle what I went through? I was advised to give you what I did. Um, how did you deal with it? I'll tell you, maybe you can, I can ask, uh, like, I think it was one TV interview asking me, in the process of building my business, has a girl ever broken my heart? <laughs> and how did I handle it? So, first of all, I'm, I'm very funny in that area when, when I'm focused on building uh, a business, those things, you know, you don't notice it, it doesn't, because you're your focus and your emotions is totally in the business. I think my business can break my heart more than how a human being can break my heart because that's where the energy is mostly, the emotions, the commitment, and a lot of things, right? What was your biggest fear? It could be me when I started. Many of you are still at the beginning stage. You are still, you're still at, many, many of you are still like in your first, second, third year of your career. You're still very, very young. You're still at the starting stage. You, you may have fears. It's normal to have fears. I have fear. I still have fears now. There are fears now in different levels. Dan Gute still has fears. There are his fears and his fears may be worth a billion dollars. My fear may still be worth just a million francs, you know. So we all have fears. Why why did you do it like that? You know, maybe I could 
I could have shared with you my story and you're like, but why did you ever act, uh, act like this? I like to pick my mind and know why I behave like that or why I do, why did I uh, focus on some things in this particular direction? As you see, some questions you can ask your mentor. Number seven, provide value. Yes, it's not just the mentor that provides value, the mentees too should provide value. The mentees should provide value. So, mentees should recognize their capacity to provide value to their mentors and I all identify opportunities to provide value. Yes, we can find a way to provide value. And of course, as I said again, providing value to your mentor doesn't mean that he, he needs your help. It could just be a way of service. It could just be a, a reciprocal. You know, any relationship, there's some, there's, there should be two ways. They say, the majority of the mentors come to you, they don't, they don't, they, they're, they're just giving back. They're just giving back. So the value I give you guys is, pay. for example, this this particular thing I'm teaching you on how to be a good mentee, I did not design this thing for you guys. Trust me. Let me just tell you. This thing was, I did this training in February by an organization in Senegal that paid me 350,000 francs to do this training for an hour. Part of their service is mentorship. They provide mentorship to people. So they wanted me to design a, 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 a program for their mentees and one for their mentors. So there's another training on how to be a good mentor that I had. I designed for them and I taught them how to do it. So this is not for you to say, I'm just doing it because maybe you're lacking in that area, you see. So I go extra mile to do some of these things from, from my comfort, from my love to serve and, and, and desire to do that. I wake up 4 a.m. to answer to your messages and emails and write your recommendation letters. And this teach you, give you all the advice that is paid for for free from my place of, of service and all of that. I give you courses that people buy one course for 20,000, 25,000 pounds in the public, but I give you for free to see all of that. You see, that is means serving and providing you value. And you providing value is just to, to serve and to prove that you are somebody who is uh, committed, who you, you value, of course, you see, and, and you respect that. There are many ways that mentees provide value to, to, to mentor. It could just be, you know, you can decide and volunteer for one of the mentors' events, and if you know, promote the event, volunteer to, to be, I think I had a mentee one time in, in Boya and all of that. And anytime I was doing an event, she would come volunteer and make sure the hall is set and all of that. You can, uh, um, some, some, some of you have just sat and you sent me a 10,000 francs, a 5,000 francs, a 2,000 francs, a 1,000 francs for, okay, just get data and all of that. Those things are not because I lack, they're just because you, you love and, and you care and you value what you do and that is what you can do on, in your own capacity, okay? It's not an obligation, it's, it's an option because it was an obligation of you, okay, for me to mentor you every month, you have to do this, right? I know mentors who do that. Every month they have a fee that their mentees pay to them. Every month, I know mentors that all their ment all mentees must buy their books. I've never said that to you guys. You see, all men whatever they are selling, all mentees must buy. Any events they have, all mentees must attend. Like it's a default kind of thing. When you don't, mentorship is terminated. I know many guys, my friends will do that. Especially Nigerians, they're very wrong when it comes to things like that. And, and I like that because it makes you to be extra hardworking and investing in yourself a lot and tapping everything, you see. And so I think um, Jonathan Suleiman was preaching one time and he was saying, um, you cannot say I'm a spiritual father. You don't have all of my books, all of my tapes, and all of that. But it's good. It's true. You cannot say something like a mentor. You have not bought all his books. That's the, one of the best ways to read your mentor's mind because a book you write with your mind in that, you see. So find a way to give value back, provide value back to your mentor. Use your skills, your time, your resources, whatever, to, 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 uh, to do that. It's not needed, but it's just in the part of, of service as, as a person. Be prepared, yes. Each time a mentee interacts with their mentor in a formal way, always be prepared. Many of you have had a 4 a.m. session on uh, uh, um, 
question and answer session. I'm going to really never ask questions. I have to be forcing you guys calling names. It means you come unprepared. Come very, very unprepared, right? Which is not good. So it is your responsibility to be prepared. So come with a plan, you see. Arrive with an agenda, you know, like if I'm to have a one on one session with you, one on one session with you, for example, have an agenda. Maybe your birthday, like I said, your birthday is coming up. Let me know. Always remind me on your birthday or a day to your birthday. I give you a call. We'll talk about some things that we should talk about it. And come with an agenda with a program. Some of the things you would like me to talk about as we enter the new year. My mentor does that with me. That's one of the biggest things my mentor does with me. Very important. Um, questions, come with questions to ensure the meeting is productive and willing to adjust questions and adapt and, and innovate and create new questions depending on what you discuss with the mentor. Follow up, have a plan to always reach out to your mentor, right? And in, in this routine, you practice the highest standard of professionalism. Follow up with the mentor. So many, many, again, the framework I've developed for you guys it's easy for the follow-up. Many of you, you are still sending me your daily 35 days activities. Very good. That already follow-up. Um, <clears throat> we are in the PPA community. That's follow-up. Many of you, we are in the weekly goal stage already. That's follow-up. So that's already there. You just need to respect the framework and keep pushing the work. Number 10, show gratitude. Okay, I was talking about this sometime earlier. Number 10, show gratitude. I mean, this should express gratitude and provide specific feedback about how their mentors have impacted their personal lives. Yes. One of the best ways to show gratitude to your mentor is let the mentor see that the time they're investing in you is producing results. You, you value it because you see results in their life. Oh, you see, this is where I am now because of this. You know, the relationship has brought me this far this week and this month and all of that. That very specific feedback. Let, let them see good, you know. When, when, before I started, um, I think uh, is it Calista? I love the message he sent to me one time. You know, I'm able to make some three thousand francs every month now. I used to depend just on my parents' allowance. I would not make me so happy. You see, uh, I don't need money to be happy. I know how to make my own money, but I, I can see that um, that change. You know, of you, you are able to get up consistently now, four a.m. every day. Of course, this is your first time of doing that. That is very, very powerful. Give that feedback just for you to be able to conquer sleep and start valuing and investing in your life. Very important. Some of you are able to start completing books, one book a month. That's powerful. I love that. You see, that's so important. So, express by part of the thank yous and feedback, all of that. Find ways that you can show gratitude um, to, to your mentor and even to other role models that were experienced with that. Actually, intentionally invest in your life. Show gratitude to them. Every human being um, feels different and they feel committed to you. You, you know, there's something called the, the um, um, is it great, gratefulness bank. This way, you are so grateful to somebody that by default, they feel like they owe you a debt of always being there for you, right? Good. So, um, do that. So, in all in all, to succeed in life, it advice. You need advice to succeed in life. Everybody needs advice. I need advice. That would they have coaches that they advise him? I know some that advise him. Um, the rich have coaches that he works with. Although it's the, among the top three richest men, Amazon does that. Bezos has that. Presidents have political advisors, cultural advisors, business advice, economic advisors, and so on. Everybody needs advice. Any incredible, successful person always have somebody who is like their demigod in terms of, of advice and, and so on. Okay. Questions, and then we end today's session. Any questions so far?